Good afternoon. Welcome to the FTD University webinar titled, Trimming Your Cost of Goods. Today, you will learn insider tips and tricks on how to cut your cost of goods to help you increase your profits without cutting your customers' expectations. Skip Paul, AAF, president of the Rutland Beard Floral Group, will be leading this informative webinar. A fourth generation florist, Skip operates businesses within the retail, wholesale, and import segments of the floral industry. He is a frequent industry speaker and writer and is active within the industry as a member of the Society of American Florists, the American Academy of Floriculture, the Wholesale Florist and Florist Supplier Association, and the California Association of Flower Growers and Shippers. Once Skip is finished with his presentation, we will open the webinar up for questions. If you have a question, simply type it in that question box on the upper right side of your screen. Please feel free to submit your questions during the presentation, and we'll just hold them until the Q&A portion of the webinar at the end. So without further ado, I would like to turn the call over to Skip to begin the webinar. Skip? Thank you so much, and good afternoon to everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you, and hopefully we'll all learn a little something together today. Uh, my name is Skip Paul. I am uh, president of Rutland Beard Floral Group, fourth generation in the flower business, and uh, we've learned a couple tricks along our path that uh, we like to share, and uh, hopefully all of you out there can benefit at least uh, in some way, shape, or form. It's unique to your shops. So um, we have a really great presentation today, and uh, we'll just sort of dive right into it. Uh, presentation is called, uh, it's, it's called The Flower Chain. And we look at the flower chain because it has many, many links from the time the flowers begin at the farm until they end at our shops and eventually to, to an end consumer. Um, each link in the flower chain is an important piece and has been for many years the only way in which we could get flowers to our retail stores. Um, however, we... Uh, we know that by learning about the flower chain, it will help us to, as a group, notice what specific pieces we may not need to get those flowers to our shops. So we'll start off and talk a little bit about just the, the basic concept of, of flower chain and how this works. Why is it important to learn? Well, it improves your buying knowledge base. It's going to help improve your product freshness you will be able to increase rotation times. You'll be able to hold flowers in the refrigerators in your shops longer without them going bad. And most importantly, it's going to help you reduce your cost of goods. So let's take a look real quick at how do flowers get from the farm to the retailer. Uh, for this purpose, we'll, we'll really be looking at flowers from South America. We know that flowers come from many different, from many different areas, but uh, the bulk of the flowers that are consumed in this country do come from South America, so we're going to kind of focus on that a little bit. So the flowers are going to begin at the farm. They'll go through transit into the country, pass through U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Many times we'll go through a Miami importer or a broker. Logistics to destination area is going to be how does it get from Miami to where you are? Is it going on a truck? Is it going on a plane? Uh, Finally, it probably goes to a wholesale florist and then also into a retail florist in your area. So we talked a little bit about farm production. Farm production time is 5 to 12 months for most products. And it varies depending on what the product is and, and the specifics of the growing region. Uh, certain, certain items such as roses can take up to 12 months by the time you plant that, that in the ground for it to actually be producing viable roses off the, off the plant could take up to 12 months. Some other varieties, you know, for example here, pom-poms have a much shorter, uh, shorter grow time. Challenges in farm production though is weather. Uh, we've all, you know, we've all seen in the past shortages in, in the marketplace of one product or another due to weather down in South America. Um, environmental regulations, both in this country and abroad. Uh, workforce is becoming a real challenge, um, you know, as, as more and more industry develops in these South American countries where flowers have been a, a very large export. It's tougher and tougher to get more viable workforce. And then, of course, capacity. You know, the farm, just like uh, retail, experiences capacity issues come the holidays. So, you know, obviously they want to grow as many flowers as they can for Valentine's Day and for Mother's Day. And 
uh, they but they only have so much space in, in the dirt. Um, once flowers leave the farm, they, they go through a process transit into the U.S. And the time requirements vary by region. Um, flowers coming out of Ecuador and Colombia and Costa Rica are all going to be a two-day transit time. Again, that's going to be the time that it leaves the farm until the time it gets into the U.S. Most of the products that are flying into the U.S. are flying into Miami. Uh, and what's going to happen there is from Miami, it then needs to get to someplace else. We'll talk a little bit later about some of the benefits of flying product from the farm directly to your local area. It is a little bit more expensive, but you can have product actually in, in your shop in many days within 48 hours. Um, but the government airline requirements vary by country, uh, but they all require booking an export day before departure. And basically all that means is that they have to give a list to their government officials saying this is what we're going to be sending out of the country tomorrow. And, uh, and those lists have to coincide with what, what ends up showing up to the airport. Cargo flights generally fly overnight into Miami. Um, you know, of course, the, these flights are running all the time, but, you know, we see, you know, the flights that, that our product flies on uh, goes overnight into Miami. Um, some of the flowers have been shipped by cargo ship in the past. Um, the process is limited uh, to only a few SKUs. Uh, Pom-poms and Ostromerias, carnations have been the ones that, that I've seen happen in the past, but they require huge, large quantity purchases. You're basically buying a tractor trailer load full of pom-poms. Um, so if, if you're not capable of using that tractor trailer load of pom-poms, it's, it's tough to do. Um, challenges on the, on the transit, you can run into flight delays and you can run into cargo capacity. Uh, both of those things, you know, we experience it anytime we try to get on a plane to go somewhere where our flowers experience the same kind of issues. U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Upon arrival into the U.S., every single item that comes in must be cleared before it's allowed to be shipped domestically. And you, as you see in this picture here, these are the fine folks at uh, CBP. And what do they have in their hands? They have our roses. So if you've ever received a box of roses and half of the plastic is pulled down on some of them, you know that somebody's done exactly this to it. And what they're doing here is they're, they're removing the plastic, they're checking for any type of insects as well as for any type of contraband. Um, they're also checking to see if there's any kind of fungus or disease present on the plants that anything we don't want entering our U.S. ecosystem. Um, one of the other things that CBP does is they, they check to make sure that the number of boxes that are supposed to be on that airplane is what it says on the, on the manifest. And if those two counts don't match up, it delays the entire shipment. So that's definitely something that can be a challenge. If they find a pest, it's a very simple solution most of the time. They, they fumigate it, but it does take a small delay. Um, and one of the biggest things is this is the only piece of the flower chain that really is outside of the direct control of somebody who has a vested interest financially in the flower business. So it is dependent on that third party, and it's outside of our, uh, outside of our control. Once flowers clear through customs, they go to Miami brokers many times. And Miami brokers are basically a wholesaler for wholesalers. They import product, mainly on a consignment basis. They'll warehouse the product and keep available inventory. They will sell mainly to wholesalers, although there are a number of Miami brokers that do sell to retailers, and small retailers and large retailers. Um, they will deliver the product from their refrigerated warehouse into the truck line or airline to get that product up into whatever region you're in. And if you hear the term Miami inventory, this is what it means. Some of the challenges to the Miami brokers is they are limited to what they have on hand. Um, you know, unlike the farm, they can run out and, and see what's, what's growing on the vine. In, in Miami, what they've got is what they've got. Uh, they also experience a lot more fluctuation in pricing, really driven by market demand. And one of the final things is you don't always know how old your product is in Miami. So many times, most of the time, you get something that's beautiful, but sometimes something doesn't sell, you may not know that you got something that's been there for a couple of days. So 
once the product is received from the uh, is received from the the broker, it goes to a box handling company, and this is going to be something that if it's going straight from customs to your truck line, straight from customs to your airline, your box landing company is going to pick it up. It doesn't need to sit in a broker house for a couple of days. So it's going to go straight to get uh, on its way to you. There's a couple of ways to get from Miami up to where you are. Uh, truck lines is where the overwhelming majority of the flowers head in this country. Um, one to three days transit time. Uh, and a cost of anywhere from four to twelve dollars a case, and you say, "Well, wow, that's a big difference in cost, four to twelve dollars." You got to think about a couple of things. First off, is how big a box are you shipping? If you're shipping a, a what's traditionally called a quarter box, uh, you know, maybe somewhere in the vicinity of twelve bunches of pom poms, that's going to be a smaller box, as opposed to if you're build a, sending a, a larger box with two hundred roses in it, it's going to be a bigger box. Um, the, the rates are also calculated based on your distance from their traditional trucking routes. Airlines give same-day transit time. Um, their cost is $10 to $20 a case, you know, definitely a, a little bit more. Um, and then FedEx UPS, almost always next-day transit time, um, but your cost is going to be $25 to $75 a case. Challenges, weather is going to impact any of these transits. Um, the trucks seem to be impacted the least. Uh, you know, obviously they'll drive through a thunderstorm. They may be delayed, but they're not going to cancel the truck, whereas they may cancel the flight. Um, airline cargo has to be picked up at the airport, and if you've ever done this before, you know how how much of a challenge it can be to go to the airport and have them fly into your couple of boxes of flowers and bring them out to you. Uh, and the other thing is, when when the flowers fly on the airliners, they are not climate controlled. So this would be the first time that your flowers leave a refrigerator since they've been at the farm. And that's something that, that can be very important to, to think about because it, it's if, if you're this time of year, maybe not so bad, but in the heat of July or the freezing of the winter, that could be a real issue. So we have our wholesale. Wholesale uh, florists are the main source of fresh product for 90% of retailers in this country. It's where almost everybody gets their product. They maintain inventory and sell product on a spec basis. Same day or next day delivery service depending on the time of day and how the wholesaler is set up. But they do have some challenges. They're limited to in-stock availability. If they don't have it at your local wholesale house, you can't have it today. Um, it is a substantially higher cost for the retailer if you're buying it out of a wholesaler's cooler than if you're buying it farther up the, the flower chain. And the product is warehoused up to seven days on some items. And generally, the retailer will never know what the age of their product is. And in many cases, the wholesalers don't always know the age on all of their products as well. So, you know, something to think about there, you, you may not know how old that product is when you get it. And so here is a good side-by-side -side progression. On the, on the left side of your screen, you'll see Farm Direct to Retailer. Um, and you'll see it goes, you know, day one through day six. And every step along the way, day six after it's cut, it is available to, to come into your, your shop. And through the traditional supply chain, mainly adding in the broker and the wholesaler pieces, it adds anywhere from four to eight days of possible age on your product. Now, it's important to remember, we've been doing it this way for many, many, many years, and we don't have any issues. So just because the product is been in Miami for a couple days, there's nothing wrong with it. Just because it's been in your wholesalers for a couple days doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. However, wouldn't it be great if you could get those extra days of life when the product's in your cooler? So that's one of the great advantages to moving more pieces to Farm Direct because you're going to be able to put that product in your cooler and sell it out of there without having to worry about it going bad. So look a little bit more at Wholesale Florists. They are definitely a local supplier. They offer billing and payment terms. Same day, next day delivery service. They're available in a pinch. I've, I've personally gone to my wholesalers at 4 o'clock in the afternoon to grab a bunch of roses that we needed for a 9 a.m. delivery the next morning. Um, so they, they are available in a pinch. And they generally have small minimum purchases. You can buy by the bunch. 
uh, some products you may be able to buy by the stem. The, some of the, the challenges with the wholesale florists is they can be expensive, um, you know, especially with some more boutique product. Um, limited inventory just to what they have on hand. Unknown age and unknown origin. You know, you may know that they have red roses, but you may not know whether they're from Colombia or Ecuador or someplace else. And you may not know if they're uh, from a farm that you really like or just from some generic farm. You have lots of added costs passed on to the retailer. Every time you buy flowers from the wholesaler, you're paying for part of that wholesaler's building. You're paying for their trucks and the salaries of the people that work there and the owners to take a piece, as well as other customers' bad debt. And these are all normal things. There's nothing wrong with this, but you have to think about where your money's going and why it costs a little bit more to buy from a wholesaler because you're paying for these other things. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have True Farm Direct. And True Farm Direct is going to give you some positives. It's going to be your lowest price available. Um, it's also going to be your freshest product available. It's more likely than not in some type of dirt at the time that you place your order. Um, you have the ability to know in advance if there's going to be shortages. If you know your farms will will often communicate things to let you know that oh hey listen you know we've got uh, we've got an issue with our white rose plants and they're going to not be producing for the next two months. So you'll know in advance if you have to find your white roses elsewhere. Um, at the same time, they have the ability to confirm special orders months in advance. So if you have a big party and you go hey listen I'm going to need 2,000 hydrangeas. You can put that order in well in advance knowing that you're going to get it. Farm direct negatives. Um, finding the farms is very, very difficult. Um, many of them do not have websites or phones that you'll be able to locate a number for. Uh, very, very few farms have someone who speaks English on a, on a very good level. So communication is going to be a barrier. You can't just pick up the phone and start calling random phone numbers down in, in Bogota. Um, managing contacts at 20 to 30 farms is a full-time job. And you may be asking yourself, well, what do I need 20 or 30 farms for? Well, think about the products that you, that you typically buy. You're going to want to have one or two or maybe three different rose farms. And a rose farm is probably not going to also grow carnations. So you're going to need a carnation farm or two. And you'll need a lily farm or two. Uh, you always want to have a backup if you can. So very quickly, these the number of farms that you deal with may, may reach 20 to 30 farms. What that also means is that you get 20 bills every week from 20 different people that you have to reconcile and account and pay. You would have to manage the logistics into the U.S. There are companies out there that do that. They do a great job at it, but it is something else that has to, to be concerned with. Um, and the one thing to remember is the retail order to the farm is going to be small compared to their other customers doesn't mean they're not going to treat you well. They will. They love having business, just as, just as we do. But think about it. If you have a customer who orders five times a week from you, and you have a customer who orders once a month from you, and you have a customer who orders three times a year from you, you're going to be just more familiar with the needs and probably give a little bit better service to the guy who's ordering from you every day. Um, if you're that guy for the wholesaler, you know, you may be a big fish for the wholesaler. That may translate you into a small fish for the farm. You know, just something to keep in mind. Um, the other thing is, what do you do if the product's not available? You know, if there's something that happens and a farm says, hey, listen, sorry, we had a fire in our greenhouse and we have no cherry brandy roses and we know that you're coming into fall and you've taken all these weddings, but we, we just don't have them. you got to think about what you're going to do if, if that product's not available. Somewhere in the middle between the traditional flower train with, with wholesalers and brokers and True Farm Direct is a, is a model somewhat known as cooperative purchasing. And you try to remove a couple links out of the chain uh, when you're trying to do this. Um, benefits of cooperative purchasing, it's going to leverage the buying power of multiple retailers together to gain purchasing power. So we're going to take my order for lilies and your order for lilies and somebody else's order for lilies. We're going to put them all together. Now all of a sudden we have an order that the farm is going to pay attention to. Um, it eliminates expenses of middlemen. There are a lot of middlemen that I just described to you, and it and eliminates some of those guys. Uh, brings the freshest products to the retailer by minimizing transit and hold times. So your product is pretty much moving throughout this entire process rather than sitting and waiting to be sold at a couple different spots. Um, many programs 
offer both Miami-based and farm-based products. You know, it's important because, you know, we looked at that, that slide earlier that had the progression time. You need at least six days to get farm product to you, generally speaking. Um, there are definitely occasions where you can get something in, in you know, 48 hours or you know, two or three days, but traditionally speaking, you're going to want to get six days in there because that's going to give you your traditional uh, shipping av av availability. Um, you may want to jump in and grab some excess inventory in Miami because maybe you just had a funeral that just walked in and you know your truck is leaving today for Miami and the funeral's not for three days. Well, you might as well grab that extra product. So Miami can be a great way to pick that up. Or if you see, hey, listen, you know, things are running very, very busy next week, and I didn't order enough from the farms. It lets you add into your order some. And finally, there are some buying programs that offer overnight shipping on select items. Um, so that's that's really great to help you out in a pinch. You know, you can order three o'clock in the afternoon and have it tomorrow morning in in your shop. Um, generally speaking these buying group programs are going to include 90% of the flowers that we use uh, in the business. Um, and if you look at the, the screen here, you'll see there's, there's not much that we use on a regular basis that's not included on this list. Customer requirements. Um, you have to be able to purchase flowers in cases. Uh, that, is, that is very, very important because you're not going to be able to call the farm or put in a, an order through the web and say, I need a bunch of white roses and I need a bunch of red carns and throw three bunches of hypericum in there too. Um, those things don't mix well together at the farm level. They probably are not being grown in the same areas. Um, so they're, gonna, they're not going to be able to do that. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to order the box of roses. You have to order the box of hypericum. You have to order the box of carnations. So you've, you've got to have the ability to purchase your flowers in cases. You're going to have to have a good credit history. Um, there are a number of different cooperative purchasing groups out there. And uh, you know, you, you've got to have good credit to, to be able to, to work with most of these guys. You have to want to buy with other people too. And that's important. Some people are, uh, shy away from the concept because they say, well, I don't want to help my competitor. And you have to understand it's not helping your competitor so much as it's helping the industry. If if somebody gets a flower delivered to them and they are happy with that experience, they're going to buy flowers next time. It doesn't matter where they are. It doesn't matter if it could be in the same town, same state, across the country. If they have a if they get a flower and they don't have such a great experience, they're going to look for some other gift. Um, and that's that's really not so great for anybody in the industry. So um, you know, always, always think about that. And finally, you are going to have to work on some pre-planning and inventory management skills. Um, biggest things that are going to be at the holidays, you're going to have to put in your Valentine's order uh, about a, a month and a half or so before the actual holiday itself. We're, we're generally putting the finishing touches on our Valentine's order uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, we will have already given the farms an initial order uh, just after Thanksgiving for Valentine's Day. Um, Mother's Day, we're putting in orders in January and then immediately again right after Valentine's Day. So you've got to be able to, to plan out, and you should know these things based on what you used last year, what, what you would use this upcoming year. But you do have to, to have some of those skills. Some of the key benefits, you're going to gain the buying power of wholesalers and importers as a retailer. You're going to get recognition and priority from the farms because your group is buying a lot together. They'll be able to pack your flowers as needed. So I know a lot of folks that get custom packed rose boxes that say, hey, listen, I want a bunch of white and a bunch of pink and a bunch of orange and a bunch of purple. That's what I want in my box. And that's what they get. It's custom packed every week like that. Um, the other thing you get is selection of key farm partners. So we're going to get farms that, that we work with that are going to give good solid customer service. They recognize what we're doing as retailers. They recognize what the traditional broker wholesaler model is doing and realize where everybody fits in together. So let's look at the cost analysis. Um, when you eliminate the importer and broker costs, you save 18 to 25 percent. Uh, when you eliminate the wholesaler costs, 
you save an additional 25 to 50 percent. And these savings get put directly into the retailer's pocket. So let's look at an example here. Uh, we have a 60 centimeter premium Colombian Freedom Rose. The national wholesaler average price for this rose is 96 cents. We looked at a flower buying program last week, 71 cents. Let's say you buy 200 of these roses each week. It's a difference of $50 a week times 48 weeks, it's $2,400 per year in savings just by buying one box of red roses a week. I think everybody on here is probably dealing with at least one box of red roses. I could think of a lot of things I could do with $2,400, and I would love to keep that. Don't get me wrong. I think many of the folks I deal with at the wholesaler are very nice, but I would like my $2,400. Thank you. So let's look at another example, though. Uh, you have Pom Pom CDN. Traditional wholesale price, $379. Flower buying program, $276. You know, you're talking about a dollar, dollar and three cents per bunch, and how many bunches of pom poms do you go through in a year? Um, white Oriental Lily, two to three bloom, traditional wholesale price, seventeen ninety five, flower buying program, twelve dollars and forty cents. So for this one, you're talking about five dollars a bunch less. That really adds up quick. So it's not just roses. There's a lot of other products that that are impacted here. Um, so what does group buying benefit me? Well, it reduces your fresh flower costs. That's number one for sure. You definitely want to reduce your costs. It's going to standardize a pricing model. So instead of wondering what the price is going to be, you're going to have a pretty good gauge because the pricing at the farm doesn't really change a whole heck of a lot on a daily basis. Um, it's going to minimize the age of the product when it reaches your shop. All of your logistics are handled. So your customs, your freight, your handling, they're not issues that you have to worry about at the shop. All of the most reliable farms are sourced, and bookkeeping is handled in a clearinghouse format, one consolidated invoice for all products. So you're not dealing with 30 different invoices every week. I want to talk a little bit about a couple of rules of buying, um, and this will help to push you in the right direction, hopefully, to, to determine where you best fit as a, as a flower buyer. Uh, but the first thing is you need to know your needs. You need to buy the bargains. You need to remember that business is business. You need to add in all of your fees and charges when you're calculating your, your bill. And you need to pay your bills on time. So those are the, definitely the five key rules to buying. Let's talk about knowing your needs. Knowing your needs is really, really easy to do. You know, often get questions, well, how, how should I decide you know, how many flowers I should buy? Well, take up your invoices from, from all of the places that you've bought flowers over the past two weeks and figure out how many of each thing did you buy. Just do a little tally mark, just like you're counting up flowers for a wedding. When you do your tally mark, you go, okay, I have this many red roses and this many carnations and this many baker fern, and you add them all up. That's going to give you your two-week average. Now divide that in half. That should give you your one-week average, and that's what you should buy for next week. It's that simple. Um, unless there's something outrageous coming up, you know, if, if you have a, a small holiday or the first day of school, I know it's a little, always a little bit busier for us. It's not a real holiday, but, you know, we might get an extra couple hundred orders, um, you know, th for the week. You know, we want to make sure that we can account for those things. So buy your weekly needs in advance. Even if you don't buy through a buying group or direct, pre-book with your wholesaler. Um, you're going to save some money. And definitely use what you have. I can't tell you how many times I walk into a flower shop and there are beautiful buckets of mixed flowers in the back that are the ones that, the leftovers. You had three bunches of green pom-poms and you just stuck them in that bucket and it's in there with four roses and it's in there with a couple of ostromeria. You can take all those flowers and make them into a very, very nice arrangement. However, we all seem to go out to the nice pretty flower display and get the brand new product. Um, and what ends up happening is the flowers in the bucket in the back room end up sitting there until they go bad and we throw them out. So use what you have um, and use the, the older product first, first in, first out. You always want to think about buying the bargains. Now buying the bargains doesn't mean buying the junk. Um, so I don't want you guys to think that buying the bargains means taking advantage of opportunities that come up 
for you. Um, the most frequent bargain that I see is an overgrowth situation. So, you know, maybe they had a little bit extra sun down in South America this week. And as a result, the hydrangea bushes just bloomed extra in blue hydrangea. Well, guess what? The hydrangea guy's got to sell the blue hydrangea. It's going to turn color. So what's he do? He cuts the price down. If he cuts that price in half on blue hydrangea because he's getting half price or nothing, you should buy it at half price. And guess what? Everybody gets blue hydrangea this week. Uh, the other thing to think about is a wholesaler one-off. And, and the wholesaler one-offs are typically going to be mixed boxes. And, and I say this so if you have uh, if a wholesaler has a wedding that they're buying flowers for, they might run into a situation where they have to buy a whole case of um, sweet Aikido roses. And the they only needed to actually sell one bunch. So they've got you know, five, six, seven bunches of leftover roses here that they've got to sell. That's the kind of opportunity that you can go into the wholesaler and say, hey, listen, you know what? You worked me a deal on them. I know there's nothing wrong with them. It was a special order that you didn't sell the whole order. And the wholesaler many times will take that opportunity to cut their losses as well. So great opportunity buys. And you can oftentimes find those towards the end of the week, Thursday, Friday of the week, uh, before, you know, coming into the weekend. Definitely in very, very important for you to remember, business is business, and you are in business. Um, don't allow guilt trips from your current vendors. Um, you know, they, every supplier that you've been working with, if you've been working with them for 20, 30 years, they should be giving you the best price and service available. This is your opportunity to keep them honest. And if they get offended that you're trying to keep them honest, then then you know what, that, that should make you ask yourself something. Um, don't fall for the just give me a little something routine. You know, that's something we, we see a lot. Well, you know what, can you just, can you at least give me your, your Baker Firm purchase? And all of a sudden, you're paying two ninety nine a bunch for Baker Firm. Um, you know, so it's, it's very important to, to just separate business from friendships, and, and many of us have friendships with some of our, some of our wholesale reps over the years, uh, but you've got to separate the two. When you're calculating how much you're actually paying for stuff, you have to add in all of your fees. Your, your fees can be delivery charges, fuel surcharges, energy recovery costs, statement fees, credit card processing fees, any of these things that get tacked onto your bill that you have to pay for in order to get the flowers. You need to add in. Um, and I use you know all these different examples here, but the most common one definitely is, is the delivery charges. If you pay $12.95 a delivery charge and you get an average of six deliveries a week, maybe you get three deliveries from one wholesaler and three deliveries from another wholesaler, you're paying $77 a week in delivery charges. That adds up to over $4,000 a year that you're paying in delivery charges. You have to take that into account when you're, when you're comparing prices then at that point as well. Yeah, that's, that's a significant amount of money. And definitely, 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 you have to pay your bills on time. Your wholesaler is not a bank. They don't want to be your bank. Um, and, and, and trying to deter you from being your, your bank, they charge interest at 18 to 24%, and that is expensive. Uh, the default rate today on flower shops paying wholesalers is three times higher than it was 10 years ago. Almost 1% of wholesale costs goes to pay other shops bad debt. So that means that if you go to your wholesaler, and you buy $500 standing order on Monday, five bucks of that every week is going to pay somebody else's bill. Just keep that in mind as well. One of these solutions that, that has been brought about, FTD Flower Exchange, um, I can tell you I have used FTD Flower Exchange. It is, it is a very, very robust site, offers product from a number of different farms. Um, and by all means, it is one of many options. So there are many options out there. This one is a great one, though. Um, selection, you have 40 farms. Um, they always have what you need. You know, I, I was playing on there last week. I found three or four different rose farms. Um, I found uh, a couple of different lily farms. You know, just it's, it's very, very robust. Um, the quality, the specifications for post-harvest and packaging by flower type, 
is overseen by FTD. And you know FTD does good work across the board. And, and so you know if, if they're watching us at the retail level as to are we delivering flowers on time and are we submitting delivery confirmations, you know they're doing the same thing to the farms to make sure that they're keeping up with their end of the bargain, making sure that their quality levels are done and that they're processing orders efficiently. Um, there are options for logistics to get from the farm to your shop in as little as 48 hours. Um, it's definitely something to think about as, as more of an emergency basis because it is rather expensive. Um, but when you need it, I mean, how great to be able to say, hey, listen, this was this was down in, in Columbia in the ground on Monday, and here you are. I have it uh, for your wedding on, on this weekend. Um, FTD does have a, a really fabulous rewards program uh, that allows you to save up to 20% on each order. Um, we talked a little bit before about billing. FTD's got this down to a science. It goes right onto your clearinghouse statement. And it's simple. You're doing your ordering and service online. And if you're not a computer online person with doing your, your buying, that's okay too because they have a whole staff of people that will be happy to talk to you on the phone um, and, and work through things of that end. Um, I'd like to open the, the session up to questions. Um, you can always feel free to email me at any point after the presentation as well if you have a one-on-one a, a -on -one question. Uh, but we'd, we'd like to open the, uh, the session up for questions. Skip, thank you so much for sharing a lot of great information on uh, the flower chain and pricing and how we can all uh, trim our cost of goods through our flower purchasing. Um, as he said, we are now open for questions. So if you have a question, simply type it in that question box that's on that upper right side of your screen. Um, and we do have uh, a question from Steve. He wants to know, how do you decide what to buy each week? So, great question. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about using the, the two-week average. Um, so, that is, that is kind of what I use as a base. And then we will look at what the bargains are and blend the bargains in as well. You know, if there's something that we can get a, a, a good value buy on, we will definitely take advantage of that opportunity. It, um, you know, it really helps to keep our cost of goods levels down. And we know it's something that we can give some extra value to the customer. You know, they, they get happy when they're able to see that, you know, in, in the arrangement, we gave them a couple extra flowers. And it's not really stuffing because we got such a great deal on it. So the, the price of those roses came down this week. They just got a better value. Um, so it, it's, it's really helped to, to build up the retail business as well. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. And like we said, if you've got any questions, Type those in the question box, and Skip will be happy to answer any of your questions. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else. You know, yeah, we we do have a couple of questions. A couple of the Canadian members on the line um, uh, that are asking if uh, FT Flower Exchange is available in Canada. So we will definitely have uh, your Flower Exchange the rep reach out to you guys for sure. All right, we do have a question skip from Bruce. Um, holiday pricing is market pricing as opposed to a weekly rate? Like, how does that? So, yeah, the great question. Um, at the holidays, what what we will see when when I deal directly with a farm, we will typically negotiate our holiday pricing well, well, well in advance. Like, I can tell you right now what what we'd be paying for uh, for roses at Valentine's Day. Um, and I mean, we're four months away. We have a lot. To, <laughs> we have a couple of couple of little holidays before we get there. Um, but a lot of products don't fluctuate much around the holidays. It's usually the core products. So you'll see, you know, of course, in 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 the fall, orange and yellow roses and lilies are going to go up a little bit. Um, you know, when you get into Christmas, you'll see, of course, the the red roses and and maybe a little bit of an increase in white. Um, the other time you see a little bit of an increase is on the um, it's on the on the holiday freight. Uh, there are sometimes some holiday surcharges that that the freight importers, uh, the the airlines and the truck lines and the, will will impose. So that does add some cost to uh, to things at the holidays, but it's not nearly as dramatic of a fluctuation as you see in the wholesale side. 
you know, you will see at the wholesale side, um, you know, products literally doubling and tripling in price at, at a holiday, and you, you really don't see that at the farm level. You might see a 20% or 30% increase. At the same time, there are farms that we work with. For example, our carnation farm that we buy from, we have negotiated with them a price every day of the year. We said, listen, give us a price that you need to grow your carnation. Whether they're whether they're doing it in July or whether they're doing it in December or February, they still got to pay their bills at their farm. So we said, listen, tell us what you need 52 weeks of the year. So for our carnations, for example, we pay the exact same price every single week of the year. Uh, there's there's no change in the price. So, you know, it really depends on the product. It depends on the farm. Uh, but the, the fluctuations are not as significant as you see in, in the wholesale business. Great. We've got another question from Shireen. Um, how easy is it to get credit when the product is damaged? That's It's super easy to get credit when the product is damaged. Um, typically, what most of the farms will ask for is a picture of the problem and a picture of the label on the box. And the reason they want that label on the box is because these farms actually track down to which row in the greenhouse the flowers came from. And they can get that from the code that's on the box. Um, so you take those pictures, you email them, and you say, you know, hey, I have one bunch of roses, and there's some botrytis on the heads. No problem. And they'll just, they, many times they don't even send you a document for the credit, they just expect that you're going to take it off. You know, if it's very simple. You just email them, uh, you know, a couple of pictures. You snap it on your cell phone, and you're done. It, it. I do have to say though, it, it happens very, very infrequently for us. I am going to say um, less than two percent of our products we take credit on. You know, it just. You got to remember, you're getting products that have a lot less age on them. They've been touched a lot less times. They've gone through a lot less buildings and a, on less trucks. So the less it gets touched, the less chance it has to break or get out of the refrigerator for a little bit or sit in, and sit for a couple of days. So the, the credits, it's very easy, but you, you'll, you'll notice that, that the amount of credits will actually drop significantly over what you're probably accustomed to taking. All right, great. Thank you so much, Skip. Well, it looks like we're out of questions for day today. You did a great job of uh, sharing a lot of information during the presentation. Um, if anybody does have questions that come up afterwards, uh, you feel, please feel free to email Skip. His email is on there, skip at rutlandbeard.com. Um, we just want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar. And if you missed a portion, you want to review it again, um, a replay will be available at FTD University Online later this week. Uh, the webinar materials are always available at ftdi.com, so you can simply go onto the website and uh, click through onto the webinar series page and download those. Uh, we will be sending you, as always, a very brief survey just to gather your feedback on today's web webinar, so we'd ask that you would just take a minute to complete the survey, help us improve future webinars, and give us suggestions for other education programs that you're interested in. The next FTD webinar is scheduled for Tuesday, December 6th. Glenna Hecht, president and founder of Humanistic Consulting, will teach you how to create an onboarding experience for new employees that is memorable and can be replicated frequently. The registration is already available at ftdi.com, so be sure to register as soon as possible to reserve your spot. Uh, again, we want to thank you, Skip, for sharing such great information on how to cut our cost of goods through efficient floral buying. Uh, this concludes FT's webinar, Trimming Your Cost of Goods. Thank you, everyone.